What's up guys, Twitchy here and welcome to part 13 in the Arc Server Manager series. Today we're going over server file details. This is a very, very important part of uh, setting up a server. This is where you're going to put your admin, your um, exclusive joins, and your whitelisting stuff. So as of right now, if you guys are just been following along and kind of doing settings as the, as the video has been going, this is the time that you want to actually hit that install button up at the top right. You could have done it before, and if you did, that's great. But if you haven't yet, do it now because you won't be able to edit anything in this section until the server itself is installed. So, yeah. If you don't need this section, feel free to skip around in the uh, tutorials. Hopefully find something you need. But if you do need this section, hold on tight because we're going to get into it. All right, guys. So if you've just gotten done, finished installing, you'll see a screen um, that basically looks like this big white box I got in the middle of my screen here. And once it says finished upgrade process, you're good to go. All right. So you can close out of that. So now when you go into your server file details, you're going to actually see this and you're going to be able to do something here. OK, and that's the important part is right. Being able to do something here. So you have an administrator's tab or area, a whitelisted area, and an exclusive join area. The exclusive join area is so that the person can join your server by their ID and be allowed in. If you've ever done, been on a Minecraft server, you'd use the in-game name, but on Arc, you have to use either the Steam64 ID or from what I've read and I haven't, I haven't experimented with is the Epic ID. Now, we'll go over that, the Epic ID stuff, when we do the crossplay tutorial but for now we're just looking and assuming that this is all steam so first things first we need a player id well what is that that's your steam 64 id so one good place that you can look at and find your steam 64 id is actually on your steam profile itself now if you set up a custom url like i have you're not going to be able to do this, but you see there's a URL underneath the store, https colon slash slash steamcommunity.com slash ID slash, and mine says Twitchy Digits Gaming. That is my custom URL, but a lot of you will just have a number series after that. That'll be your Steam64 ID. But if you don't have your Steam64 ID there, you can always go to steamid.io and type in your custom URL. All right, and you can see this is Twitchy Digits is the name. I've been a uh, member since, what, 2012? Yay! And that right there is my Steam 64 ID. So what I do is I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to minimize both Steam and the other. I'm going to copy and paste that in. I'm going to say OK. And here's where the issue is, is where a lot of people have been contacting me about it. The player name says not available. I haven't found a solution to that as of yet. I believe that Steam or, well, I believe Steam must have changed something in the background. Because you used to be able to go into Steam.io and just type in, uh, Steam.io and just type in your name. And now you get nothing, right? So, um, I'm thinking somewhere along the way something changed. I'm still looking at some things. If I find an answer to that, I will uh, definitely post something. But the important thing is, is that those IDs are there. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and say that I am whitelisted. I am able to be exclusively joining. Exclusive. Okay, so while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about this um, generally. Most of you who have hosted servers in the past, other than ARC, probably are aware that there is a whitelisting of servers where you use a player's name or a player's ID to allow them into the server without them needing a password. You can do that with Minecraft and several other, Seven Days to Die, all kinds of other games. ARC handles that a little bit differently. Whitelisting on ARC is not the same as whitelisting on say, Minecraft. Just because I have a whitelisted ID there doesn't mean that that person can join without a password. All that means is they're not on a player count check, all right? So if you have a server that's only allowed 10 players and a whitelisted player comes in, they're just allowed to join. The exclusive join, if you want whitelisting done like in Minecraft, you want to do the exclusive join option then. 
All right, so all of that stuff is there. I've got me as an administrator, me is allowed on the server no matter how many people are on it, and me allowed in without a password. And let me go ahead and hit save on that. And then I wanna show you where these files live because that's, that's another very important thing. Okay, so right now we're in the folder that is where we are saving our servers and we are in the Twitchy's test server. That's the server we've been working on right now. And you guys can see these are all the game files and everything. What you want to do is go to the old shooter game. You're going to want to go to binaries. You're going to want to go to Windows 64. And you're going to look for a couple of important files in here. One of which is going to be a player's exclusive join list. That is all of the players who can actually enter that server without needing a password. If we open that up and look at it, and let me pull that down to this monitor, um, you can see that that's there and it exists. All right. Players, no check. That is the whitelist. And you can see that that's there. And then in saved, allowed cheater. <laughs> this, it's a terrible way of saying admin. Uh, but allowed cheater Steam ID is text. And you can see I'm there. So our server manager is creating the files you need to do the job. It's just not fully populating the player name. So I think that's the important thing right now. Like I said, I'm going to keep an eye out and, and look at things and see if um, there's a fix for that somewhere. Maybe there's a port that needs opened or something that isn't listed. But for right now, the really, really important thing is it's actually working so you can still use it. And that right there, my friends, is server file details in a nutshell. If you guys have any specific questions about it, please let me know. Um, I hope you found the video helpful. And I'll see you on the next one.